Okay, here we go. In 2012, we discovered the Higgs boson. It was a historic moment. I remember it vividly because the science community was just so super pumped when we finally found it. They'd been working for so long to do it. In fact, that is what the Large Hadron Collider was built to do. It succeeded in its mission, which is great. But now what? Over the next two years, physicists, engineers, and postdocs and scientists are hand building new components and are set on creating a brand new system, the High Luminosity LHC. This upgraded machine will produce 10 times more particle collisions than the LHC used to. It will make 15 million Higgs bosons every year. So what do they do at CERN when the LHC is shut down? Kind of a lot. Hey there, you big bunches of particles. I'm Trace. Thanks for watching. When it's running, the Large Hadron Collider contains beams of charged protons shooting along its superconducting pipes at nearly the speed of light. The data gleaned from these particles smashing together inside the largest scientific experiment ever built is astronomical, to use just the right word. When it's running, particle physicists all over the world are wrapped with attention. They're writing papers, they're reading papers, they're forming hypotheses, and they're trying to get time in the experiments at CERN to test them. But right now, there's no beam in the LHC. Here's the live view today. Yeah, it's off. When it's off, the particle physicists don't have particles to peer at. But that doesn't mean that they just sit idle. Yeah, we're all, we all went away on vacation for, for two years. That is Stephen Goldfarb. I am a physicist. Uh, I work for the University of Melbourne on the ATLAS experiment on the Large Hadron Collider here at CERN. I think, in fact, we're, we're working even more during a shutdown than when there isn't a shutdown. One, we, we continue to do analysis of the data, which we do forever. And some analyses are just very, very complex, and so it takes a lot of effort to, to do them. Um, but then at the same time, you have people who are working uh, in our inside our detectors or, or just outside preparing new uh, components to be installed. So right now what we are doing is pulling some magnets out of the tunnel, putting man magnets in, changing beam dumps, digging tunnels, yeah. for example, uh, near the experiments like ATLAS or CMS that people might know more. We are building shafts and tunnels so that in the future we can put more equipment and more service tunnels. Like these kind of things are going on right now. And that is Andrea Santa Maria Garcia. And I did my PhD here at CERN and then I did a postdoc. At CERN, a shutdown can actually be busier than when Beam is running. I mean, look at the schedule. This is what they're working on during what they call the LS2 or Long Shutdown 2. There is so much going on here and there's so much to do. And they're doing all of this for one reason, because they achieved their goal of finding the Higgs boson. I mean, if you think about it, it's the same thing that you would do when you reach the end of a race. You go back to the starting line and you race again. And for CERN, that means creating the high luminosity LHC. But it sounds cool, but what does that even mean? So luminosity it's what we call the rate of, of particles colliding per mm -hmm. second. Well, that's the peak luminosity, and then what we call integrated luminosity is all of the recorded data. So now what we want to, we'll increase five times the rate of collisions and 10 times the recorded data. And for this, we need to do, it, it looks like obvious, it's like just run it more, but actually it's more, much more complicated than that. You know, increasing the amount of data we're getting per second, it, it, it taxes everything. So the detector has to be able to recover. You know, right now, our, our, when there's a collision, it happens every 25 nanoseconds. So in 25 nanoseconds, you have to be able to have a particle go through, measure that, and then recover and be ready for the next uh, collisions to happen. It basically means they're gonna pump up everything. They're turning the LHC up to 11, which means every link in the chain also has to be upgraded. And this means that you need a lot of resolution. And for this, you need a lot of like computational work. And actually there are a lot of algorithms that from what the detectors see, they reconstruct these jets. And this is all like computation, it's crazy. But also we need new detectors, new ways of pulling out the data fast. It's like in incredible. Then you've got the, all the, the software that has to process everything, take that data and process it. So all of that has to happen more quickly. So the whole chain has to be made to work. It kind of helps to think of it this way. 
The ATLAS, the CMS, the LHCB are experiments that sit on the Large Hadron Collider, and they are like giant cameras. Right now, these cameras take pictures of 20 particle collisions or so every about two dozen nanoseconds. The computers at CERN have to decide if one of those collisions is worth storing in memory, and if so, they save it and send it for further calculation. Then they reset everything again before the next collision happens. This is a matter of nanoseconds we're talking about. But the high luminosity LHC is going to deliver 10 times more particle collisions to the experiment than they get now. That is so, so much more. If they had 20 collisions before, now they're going to have 200 and they still have to do this whole job. So you guys are like, here's some more beam. And then they're like, oh my God, we got to do all this data. That is exactly <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> That seems like an okay way to go. That seems like a good life. Think of it this way. Just like when you go to a football game, you can't really take a clear picture of the action if the camera isn't fast enough. So because we are upgrading to the high luminosity LHC, we also have to upgrade the cameras or experiments. That way the experimenters can see the collisions better and more quickly, and it means upgrading components and creating new sensors and new detectors and new systems. And all of this is a lot, and it's been years in the making. The technology has improved, so we're working on improving our detectors and preparing for this higher luminosity, preparing for the idea that we're going to have many more collisions. And that changes things, it's a game changer. It means that our detectors have to work even faster. We're talking about moving from you know, 40 million <laughs> collisions per second to, to even more. And, and that's uh, it's insane when you think about it, but, but that's what we do. Because they will need to detect many more particle collisions. And so all of the <laughs> detectors, maybe they're going to be stripped apart and new ones will be built, but they're starting, they're already like full in development. And now is just the sprint to get it installed. And you might be wondering, as I was, why? We did this Higgs boson thing. We know it's there. What are we trying to do? What is the goal? So, um, you guys know we discovered the Higgs boson, which was the main goal for this uh, Large Hadron Collider. And we did it. But it's a very, like, it's a very weird boson. It's like a very weir weird particle, and we still don't know its properties. Mm -hmm. So the first goal of the high luminosity LHC is to have the range to, to study its properties. That's the main goal. We have a, a policy which is actually our theory, the standard model, we call it, because it's been working since 1969. It's been perfect, which is really annoying. We hate that. We want to find evidence that breaks it, that gives us, that's the only way to go forward is, is to find where we, you know, what we measure, where the physical world differs from the model. If, if it answered all the questions, <laughs> we'd be fine. We'd be done. Right, we're out of here. Um, but it doesn't, and there's huge questions out there. When we say particles here, we mean fundamental, something that's a point, there's no structure to it. It's, 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 it's the bottom of the chain, it's the Lego brick that cannot be broken anymore. We're, we're driven by, like, how do we find those? How do we, how do we understand them? How do we measure all of their properties and then understand the rules behind them? So we have really, really deep fundamental questions. And just by having those questions, that just automatically drives technology. Well, to do this, we need to get down to this scale, so we need a higher energy, et cetera, et cetera. But that's not all. The hydrogen beam is gonna be denser. The collisions will be more frequent. And the amount of data generated is just gonna skyrocket. We also want to accumulate more data. So the energy at collision is going to be the same, but the point is to accumulate 10 times more data per year. If you see how we have advanced with the data collection along the years during the LHC life, the Higgs boson has only appeared with enough data was accumulated. Here it's not about doing uh, many fancy things, it's about statistics. Mm. So we need to really increase the statistics if you want to see something, not only the Higgs properties, but anything new. I mean, the driver behind all of this is simply that we have these very important questions <laughs> that we're trying to answer, you know, the very fundamental questions that particle physics raises. Where do we come from? Why are we here? <laughs> Where are we going? What's going to happen to this universe? And, and what, are, what are we made up of? What are the, the fundamental components of us? Real quick, let me just go back to something that Andrea said. I think it's about statistics. We saw the Higgs boson after we accumulated enough data to find the signal in the atomic noise. So if CERN produces and catalogs 10 times the number of collisions and creates 10 times more data every year, that's how they'll see the next big thing. That's how they're gonna solve more fundamental questions we have about the universe. That's how they're gonna see if the Lego brick can be broken into smaller parts. And there's huge questions out there. Right now, the standard model, which has been working since 1969, it's fantastic, explains only 5% of 
the matter in the world. There's a lot of uh, area out there that we just simply don't understand. The Higgs boson could have clues in it, and we've just started to measure it. We've really just started. It, it's, it's a potential window to new physics, but we, we don't know. We don't know. So we have to measure it as precisely as possible, and for that you need lots and lots and lots of data. So before all this, I walked into the CERN control center wondering, why is the LHC shut down? What happens during a shutdown? Does everybody just go home? No way, Pass Trace. If we're really gonna crank this up to 11, we need a better atomic camera. We need more particles, more collisions, higher resolution, and more power. We just need more. Maybe you're watching this and thinking, WTF is all this quantum particle stuff anyway. What's going on here? You should click over to Brilliant and learn about it. They have a course specifically about quantum objects. Those are things smaller than atoms, and it's great. I never really understand something until I get the why of it. I'm just a curious guy, I need to know why. Passively watching something doesn't get me there, but Brilliant does. It's like the best school teacher you've ever had combined with a good storyteller. For example, I wanted to know more about the interference in radio telescopes, so I took their course on light and waves, and it was awesome. I found myself saying, huh, a lot, which is a good thing. And as you learn on Brilliant, there are quizzes which aren't intimidating at all. Instead, you get to check yourself and make sure you're understanding as you're learning and growing. The little quiz questions, they actually make me feel like I get it and that I'm on the right track, which is super great. Try it out and let me know if you agree. Click over to brilliant.org trace or grab the link in the description. You can sign up for free, satisfy your curiosity, all while building up to hopefully even more curiosity. As a bonus for Uno Dose of Trace viewers, the first 200 people who sign up, they're also going to get 20% off if you choose to try an annual membership, which I have. I could not speak highly enough about it. Plus, if you support them, you also support me. So thanks. The High Luminosity LHC is slated to end its long shutdown too in February of 2021. From there, it will spin back up and physicists, experimentalists, and theorists around the world will kick up their work to a fever pitch again. But now they'll have 10 times the raw material to work with, and I cannot wait to see what they do with it. But in the meantime, we're still in upgrade mode, which means there's a lot more stories to tell. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is part one in a multi-part series on CERN. The next one's gonna be out soon, and in that one, I look more closely at one specific project happening during the long shutdown, too. So subscribe, click the bell to get notified when that one comes out next week, and send this video to someone who doesn't know what CERN does. Thank you, thank you so much for sticking around and watching this video. I hope you learned something. I know I did while I was researching it and writing it and traveling all over the place to tell it. So thanks again. Join the Patreon if you really wanna kick up your support. And I'm Trace. I'll see you in the future.